Hank and I are about to head out for a big old day in the mountains on the bikes. And we've just started packing a few of the things we're going to need to take with us. So we thought this was the perfect opportunity to show you guys just what we take out on the bike, also how to pack it. Now we're going on a long ride, so we've got a lot of food, but these tips will help you no matter what length of ride you go on. We're heading up the Col de la Madeleine, so it's gonna be a tough one, isn't it, mate? Let's kick off with where to put your bulky items. In my mind, these should always go in the center pocket. Something like a big bar, a banana, or maybe even a spare bottle. Putting it in the center pocket is, in my mind, much more comfortable, but also it prevents any heavy items from flapping around, and it therefore frees up the other two pockets. As my left side is my least flexible side, I reserve my left pocket for emergency goodies, food that I know I may need on the ride, but I know I'm not going to be relying on them throughout the ride. So my emergency gel, for example, will be wedged in there. I also use this pocket as my mobile waste bin, wedging any waste that I have right down into the pocket and ensure that it doesn't fly out. This then frees up my right pocket, as I have good access to this pocket, for the majority of the sustenance I'll be requiring on the ride. So any small bars and gels. If you don't often ride in a cycling jersey, fear not, there are many other options available for carrying food. One of the most discreet is the top tube bag, but you could also use a saddle bag as a way of carrying a bar or two, though you will likely have to stop to retrieve food from them. And finally, why not use a bum bag? In recent years, they've gained massive popularity within the ultra endurance world and also within the mountain bike world, where enduro racers have been seen wearing them. Oh, and also Sai. How much fuel you require on a long ride is going to depend on a few things. Namely, the length of the actual ride, the intensity of the ride, and also your own personal fuel efficiency. To sustain peak intense exercise, you need to aim for around 60 to 90 grams of carbohydrate per hour for every hour you ride. Now, this does sound like quite a lot, and it is going to require some sort of mathematical calculation. But luckily these days, nutritional products have this stamped quite clearly on the outside of the packet. And that's also true for natural foods too. For Hank and I today, this roughly equates to one and a half bottles per hour, so around 750 mils, with 30 grams of carbohydrate mix in them. It is a hard, tough ride after all. We are going to need to top that up with an energy bar or a sandwich and a gel each hour. And that will get us in the ballpark of 80 grams of carbohydrate per hour. And the reason for doing this is we'll get to the end of our ride well fueled, not over fueled, and it will help our recovery for the next day. We are here in the mountains for a few days, so that is important. One final thing to know is that you should eat little and often. Don't wait 60 minutes between topping up your energy levels. Instead, aim for around 15 to 20 minutes. This will make your body much happier. Sports nutrition bars and gels are fantastic. They're designed for purpose, but we are huge advocates of taking on some real food. And there are many reasons for this. For example, if you're doing a long ride or even a back-to-back -back sportive, then you want some variety in there. That's equally as important as getting the energy gels. Now, we would advise you go by a strategy. Me, personally, I would normally take an energy bar at the beginning of a long ride. That hits the energy up, spikes it, and gets you into that rhythm. Once you're into that rhythm, the middle two hours, we would suggest you then take on board some real food. Maybe a banana, a had jam sandwich. The pros like to take those rice cakes. And then going into that last hour where you want that boost, you want that little spike of energy to get you to the finish line. This is when you want to deploy the energy gel. That will give you that hit and that will get you to the finish. If you have the time in advance to think about taking an extra something in case you get lost and spend longer out, or you misjudge your requirements for the day, try these tips. Now, personally, I have never tried this, but I don't see any reason why I couldn't remove my bar end and keep an emergency gel up in there. And you can get quite creative with this. Why not tape a couple of bars or gels underneath your saddle, or better yet, actually inside of a saddle bag. And if you have a bottom bracket spindle that's big enough, you can quite easily pop an emergency gel in there. Think of these bodges as the first aid kit in your car. You've forgotten it's there, but if you really needed it, it is there. 
I'm four hours in, I've run out of things in my pockets and it's starting to rain. I need some energy and I don't have any energy gels. So I'm gonna look for a shop because I need a classic Mars bar or sugary bar or even that really popular brown carbonated drink. Yeah, I'm sure you're, you know the one I'm thinking of. Oh. Hopefully you've had a little insight into how to effectively carry your food on the bike and you'll now be well fueled for your next long ride. Yeah, unfortunately we can't help you with the rain because we haven't really prepared for that. But if you did enjoy this video, then make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And for more how-to videos, why don't you click on Chris? Because I seem to like to do that.